Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Barnstable this morning. 23 minutes past the hour now, and we have got a very special guest on today's Business Wednesday. We had a visit from Dean Shoesmith. He comes to us all the way from London, England, where he is an HR executive. He's here in town for a human resources conference that's going on this week uh, right here in Hyannis. And we caught up with him yesterday to talk about some trends in, uh, in the workforce, some of the issues that he's dealing with, and surprisingly, uh, very similar issues in the UK going on uh, as there are here in the US. So without further ado, let's find out. Let's get to know uh, Dean Shoesmith uh, from London, England on Barnstable this morning. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Barnstable this morning. I'm Sarah Colvin, and we have a very special guest in our studio today. I welcome, and I hope I get your title right, Dean. You're the Executive Head of Human Resources for the London Boroughs of Sutton and Merton. That's absolutely right, Sarah. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. No here problem. As well. well, thank you so much for, for joining us. So, Dean, what brings you to Hyannis? I know there's a, an, an HR conference going on in Hyannis right now, and I'm assuming that's what brings you here. Indeed, um, and I was fortunate enough to be asked to speak yesterday afternoon. Uh, and I spoke on the subject of uh, employee well-being and skills deficit, and that's something we're encountering uh, significantly in the UK at the moment. Uh, so I spoke about the huge skills gap we have uh, and the difficulty, particularly for our young people, entering into the world of work. So for our uh, age range 16 to 24, uh, we have something like 23% unemployment amongst those young people at the moment. Uh, the Confederation of British Industry uh, has recently surveyed employers and they are saying something like 70% of the young people that they receive into employment are not sufficiently work ready. So that even basic skills like timekeeping, self-management, customer orientation, all of those things are significantly uh, adrift are not able to hold down a job properly. Uh, amazing. And Dean, I want to talk with you a little bit more about that. But first, I want to have our viewers get to know you a little bit. And of course, uh, obviously, from London, uh, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. Obviously, you're in human resources over there. Uh, I know you write a blog as well uh, uh, online. So talk to me a little bit about your work uh, over in London. OK, my work in London is unusual. Uh, I was the first HR director for two London boroughs. And that really signifies uh, the UK age of austerity. Um, the UK has to find savings of 81 billion pounds. Not quite sure how that converts into dollars. That's a lot, a lot, a lot of zeros <laughs> at the end. A lot of zeros at the end. Definitely. Um, so it's a huge amount of money. So public services are being cut significantly. And you kind of see it's a fairly simple message, which is where you had two sets of work, combine it into one, share it, uh, lower taxes try and make the residents happier uh, and try and cut costs. Certainly so that's not an what easy the, job. That's what the job is about. It's not an easy job because certainly at the start it was complicated. There were lots of legal complexities. Uh, the UK legal system, probably like the US, is very complex to achieve these things. Uh, but also uh, the leadership challenge of bringing two sets of different cultures, two sets of individuals together into one team across two different geographical sites, lots of challenges. Indeed, indeed. So uh, let's get back to the, the workforce skills discussion. Of course, uh, you know, we definitely see, I've talked to uh, our executive director of uh, Cape and Islands Workforce Investment Board, David Augustino. He's been on the show before, and they actually run a program for young students on teaching them those workforce skills, uh, basic ones, like mm -hmm. how to answer the phone, how mm -hmm. to dress properly. And mm -hmm. it really kind of uh, shocks me that uh, young students are, or young, young people are entering the workforce exactly. without having that basic knowledge, yeah. which I think is, is quite essential yeah. to not only the ability to get a job, but also the yeah. success of a company overall. Yeah, the study in the UK uh, recommends that children as young as the age of six, which I found staggering, should start to have instilled in them some of the skills to prepare them for the world of work. So working in teams, being able to look somebody in the eye when you speak to them rather than on the ground. Right. Those basic skills, the study, which is by Pearson Education in the UK, says that that's the age that you should start to prepare young people for the world of work. If you leave it until they're teenagers, high school age uh, in American language, you're leaving it too late. Right. And it's so much harder to instill those so that that work they ethic. They're kind of already set in their yeah, ways at exactly. that point. So talk to me a little bit about, about how uh, not only that, but really looking at workforce skills in general, not just for the young people, but really uh, across the board, how that fits into the whole uh, e economy picture. 
uh, workforce skills, in my opinion. But Ben Bernanke, who's the head of the U.S. federal uh, state, isn't he? Federal, federal Reserve, yep. yeah. Federal Reserve. Uh, used a quote or gave a quote that we use a lot in the UK which is the green shoots of recovery come from workforce skills. So I believe it is absolutely essential to ratchet up the level of workforce skills. Uh, I mentioned the Confederation of British Industry. Uh, at the moment 20% uh, of all UK jobs require a degree level qualification. Uh, over the next 10 years, that is set to double to 40%. And yet, we are significantly short of 40% of the UK workforce holding degree level qualifications. So you can just see the challenges ahead, the time scale ahead, and the real difficulties that we're encountering. Um, so we have some major challenges. Uh, we now have university fees, which have uh, qu uh, nearly quadrupled. They were £2,500 per annum for a payment. They're now £9,000 a year payment, which is actually dissuading a lot of people to go on to university level education. And something we're seeing here in the US as well. It's, I mean, even in the, the, it's just the last 10 years, it's just it blossomed the amount of money yeah. it costs to go to school. Exactly. And then you couple that with a, with a tough economy yeah. and it's becoming yeah. harder and harder yeah. for, uh, for people to go to school. And there's um, cultural differences, which I spoke about at the presentation yesterday. In the West, in the UK, in the US, uh, our young people tend to take education for granted. In the emerging economies, uh, China, Brazil, India, education is absolutely sacrosanct and uh, they are highly motivated to become educated. Now I'm generalising here, but our younger people tend to take it for granted. So you can see there are huge kind of tensions uh, where people culturally in the emerging economies are really aligned to education and skills development. We've got a cultural shift to try and address to get our young people aligned to education and what it stands for. Absolutely, and as we see, as you mentioned, uh, kind of taking a look at, at these workforce skills as a link to helping the not only the UK but the US uh, individually recover uh, from, from the recessions and from the, the economy. Do you have any proposed solutions? I mean, what would you like to see? Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you know, better school attendance, maybe, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, and things obviously are beyond many people's control, but in, in a perfect world, what would you see to improve okay. this workforce skill? A very good question, Sarah. Um, it's, I think it's, it's, there's nothing hugely sophisticated about about it. Um, you need to have that cultural alignment, you need to go back to the research study and instill some of these basic skills in young people from the earliest possible age. Um, I don't know about the US, but we tend to leave things till it hits crisis point. We don't seem to think ahead um, and plan sensibly and instill the right culture. And some of those things could be very simply achieved in our education system. And actually us as employers, as human resource professionals, we have a big job to do. Um, some work I was very proud to do um, in the UK was something called the Skills for Life programme, which wasn't actually focused on young people, but adults who'd actually missed, or rather the education system had missed them. So they'd gone through school, they'd come out with no qualifications, and at, uh, at the moment, we have seven million people in the UK who don't even have a basic level of li literacy, numeracy, or ICT wow. skills out of a, a population of 60 million. We have a significant problem there. That it, this certainly is, and so the work to, to try and help them uh, overcome that and, and perhaps educate them later in so life is certainly a, a big exactly. challenge. Um, at the moment, we're putting a lot of investment into young people, which is great, but I also worry about our older workforce. Uh, one in three uh, UK people who are out of work have been out of work for over 12 months. So we have a long-term problem, which is called structural unemployment, where those young, uh, older people are really struggling to get back into the world of work. That's a significant problem. And that uh, fairly obviously has all sorts of societal problems. Absolutely. What do people do if they can't earn some money? That's the way the system works you need money to get through life. Exactly, and it's all kind of linked. Well, Dean, I thank you so much for, for stopping by and joining me today. I do uh, want to let our viewers be aware that you do write online. Uh, your I blog do. is uh, HR Wordsmith. Do you have the web address so people can, uh, can go and check that out? I can give it to you now. Out? It is www.hrwordsmith, which is all one, dot com. I'd be 
delighted if you came and paid me a visit. Uh, leave a comment and I'll comment back. Great. Well, Dean, thank you so much for stopping by. Welcome to Barnstable, and uh, we hope to have you back uh, sometime in the future. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Dean Shoesmith uh, visiting us today here on Barnstable this morning. He is the Executive Head of Human Resources for the London Boroughs of Sutton and Merton. I'm Sarah Colvin.